Today I'd like to share with you the parable of the unforgiving servant from the book of Matthew in the Bible. Matthew is in the New Testament and is one of the Gospels, and the Gospels are the books that tell us about Jesus' life. Jesus liked to teach his followers by telling stories or parables. I agree that's an interesting way to teach. I always pay more attention to a good story. That's much more interesting than being told the exact right way to act or what to do. When I listen to a story, I like to think about what I would do if I were one of the characters. But back to our story. Oh, one last thing before we get started. Let's pause for what I call a literacy moment. We're going to hear the word forgiveness a lot. Let's go to the dictionary to see what it actually means to forgive. Yourdictionary.com says, Forgiveness is defined as letting go of past grudges or lingering anger against a person. When you are mad at someone, but then you accept their apology and are no longer mad, this is an example of forgiveness. So on with our story. Jesus was spending the afternoon with his disciples. One of his disciples, Peter, might have had a disagreement with a friend or another disciple. So he asks Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone when they do something wrong to me? Up to seven times? Peter guesses that seven should be enough. That's a strange number to pick, isn't it? But it does seem to be like a lot, right? If, if someone's giving you a hard time or sinning against you or being mean to you. So imagine if you were playing soccer with a group and your best friend keeps stealing the ball from you. You hardly get to play because he's being such a ball hog. But every time your best friend steals, at least he says he's sorry. So Peter probably thought he was being very generous by saying he could forgive someone seven times. A lot of religious teachers at the time said that it was plenty to forgive people three times. Most people in Jesus' time thought that if you forgave someone three times and they still wronged you, that you don't have to forgive them anymore. So with that in mind, Peter's guess that forgiving someone seven times seems pretty generous. But Jesus has a different idea of what forgiveness looks like. So how does Jesus respond to Peter? Jesus said, Peter, you should forgive someone 70 times 7. Now, I have my calculator here, and I was starting to multiply 70 times 7, but I realized that's not really the point, is it? Jesus knew that we should always forgive someone if they are sorry for what they have done. But instead of saying always, Jesus said, Peter, you should forgive someone 70 times 7. Jesus could have given a straightforward answer and said that you should always forgive, but he wanted Peter to really think about his answer. So Jesus decided to tell Peter this parable to help him understand how important it is to forgive someone when they're sorry. As I mentioned before, a parable is a very simple story, but it has a very important meaning. So this is Jesus' parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants, his workers. One servant owed the king 10,000 bags of talents and could not pay the king back. Now this talent is not a talent like playing drums or dancing or singing or being good at math. Talents were the money that they used in Jesus' time. A person would work to earn one denarii a day and it took 6,000 denarii to equal one talent. Wow, that sure is a lot of money to owe. What a huge debt. At first, the king decided the only way to get his money back was to sell the servant and all of his family as slaves. The servant was so upset. His wife and children would all have to go and live in different places. They might never see each other again. The servant begged the king to forgive the debt. He begged and begged the king to not sell his family as slaves. The king felt sorry for the servant. He decided to forgive the servant. He even told him that he would not have to pay the money back. Can you imagine how the servant felt? Do you think the servant was happy? Do you think he was so happy that he treated everyone nicely that day? No, he did not. As soon as the servant left the king, he found another servant who owed him money. The second servant only owed this man a hundred denarii, which we just learned denarii is worth a lot less than a talent. So his debt was very small. Even though the king had been nice to him, the servant grabbed this man and began to choke him. He told him that he would throw him in prison until he could pay the money back. But some of the other servants heard what was happening and went and told the king. What do you think the king thought? He had forgiven the servant a huge debt, but this servant could not forgive another even a small debt? The king called the first servant back in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. 
Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? The king was very angry and threw the man in prison. He would have to stay in prison until the debt was paid. Do you think the king would ever loan money to the first servant again? I don't think so. Do you think Peter understood the parable that Jesus told him about forgiveness? I certainly hope so. Jesus told that parable 2,000 years ago. Do you think it still makes sense for us today? I think that's one of the awesome things about the Bible, even though these things were written so many, many years ago, that it's still relevant to us today. So if we think about this parable in modern times, who would the characters be? We don't have a king in this country, but some countries do. So who do you think the king represents? If you guessed God, you would be right. Can you guess what role we would play? Which character would we be in this story? Yes, we are the servants of God, working toward doing the things that he teaches us to do. This parable of the unforgiving servant teaches us that God forgives us when we do wrong, like the king in the parable did. He has forgiven our debt, and we're not talking about money here. Now God wants us to forgive people when they are sorry for the bad things that they do to us. I kind of think that's what the servant in the parable should have done. Do you agree? Is it easy to forgive people who do wrong to us? Not so easy. But we could count on Jesus and God to help us to do to forgive. And think about how good it feels to forgive. How do you think the king felt after he forgave the servant with the big debt? How do you feel after you forgive someone? Makes me feel good, I know. Peaceful, sort of like when I give someone a special gift. That I don't have to feel mad and frustrated and angry anymore. Think about it all the time and having clogging up my head. So it's really it's a gift to yourself as well. I'd like to close our time together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. As we pray together, notice that we ask to be forgiven our debts as we forgive our debtors. So please, let's bow our heads, fold our hands in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace with a loving, forgiving heart. Amen.